Now when considering electric fields and forces, we wrote down the equation F is equal to EQ. Now this was useful as electric fields are independent of the small charge Q which is moving through them. So this meant that if we knew the force on one charge, Q1, then we could quite easily calculate the force on the second charge, Q2, moving through the same electrical field. So there's actually a similar relationship between the electrical potential energy, delta U, and the electrical potential, which is often called the voltage. So the voltage difference, which is represented by the symbol delta V between two points, is related to the electrical potential energy difference, delta U, through the equation delta V is equal to delta U divided by Q. So Q there is the charge which is moving between the, these two different points. Now in this equation, V is measured in volts, which has a symbol capital V. So this unit is named after the Italian physicist Alessandro Volta, who is credited with the invention of the first electrical battery. Now the change in the electrical potential energy delta U is the negative of the electrostatic work done on the particle. Now if we think about this carefully, it actually makes quite a lot of sense. So imagine that we apply an external force onto our charge in an electric field. If we apply that external force in the opposite direction to the electric field, the external force is doing positive work on the particle because the force and the displacement are in the same direction, while the electric field is doing negative work on the particle because the electric field is acting in the opposite direction to the displacement of the particle. And as we move that charged particle with that force, we're giving it energy. So in this case, it's in the form of potential energy, just as long as we leave it with the same speed it started with. So this means that we can also write the equation for potential difference as delta V is equal to delta U on Q, which is equal to negative W on Q. Now, voltage is also a scalar, just like energy. So it's actually a scalar field. We have a value of the voltage at each place in space. A useful way to represent voltage diagrammatically is with equipotential lines. So an equipotential line joins lots of points in space which are all at the same voltage. So I want you to imagine a constant electric field such as this one. Now, if we imagine moving a positive particle in the same direction as the field, we know that we're doing positive electrostatic work on the particle. That is, the electric field is doing work on the particle. So, if the electrostatic work on the particle is not zero, it tells us that the voltage must be changing. The potential difference is also not zero. Now I want you to imagine moving a particle perpendicular to this field, so in a horizontal line in this case. Now the electrostatic work is equal to the integral of f dot ds, which is equal to the integral of eq dot ds, and because e and the displacement are perpendicular to each other and we're taking the dot product, this is equal to zero. So as no electrostatic work is done to move a charged particle horizontally in this field, this tells us that there is no voltage difference when we move the particle horizontally. So horizontal lines in this field are equipotential lines. They're all at the same voltage. Now we've shown, so we've shown that for a constant electric field, the equipotential lines are perpendicular to the electric field lines, but this actually holds for all fields. So equipotential surfaces are always perpendicular to the electric field. Okay, now considering this field again, let's imagine moving a positive particle from point A up to point B. Now in this case, because we're moving it in the same direction as the field, we're doing positive electrostatic work on the particle. So let's consider our equations for voltage and we can say, well, the change in voltage is equal to VB minus VA, which is equal to the negative of the electrostatic work done on it divided by Q. And we've just described how that electrostatic work done is positive, which tells us that that change in voltage has to be negative. 
So this tells us that the voltage at B must be lower than the voltage at A. So from this, we can conclude that an electrostatic field is directed from points at a higher potential to points at a lower potential. So if we put a positively charged particle into some voltage field, that, that charged particle will move from points at higher potential to points at lower potential. If we put a negatively charged particle into that same voltage, then it's going to move from a lower potential to a higher potential. Now let's have another little look at our equation delta V is equal to minus W on Q. We know that W, the electrostatic work, is equal to the integral of F dot dS, where F is the electrostatic force, which can be written as EQ. So we can write that the electrostatic work is equal to the integral of EQ dot dS. So let's substitute that into our expression for delta V. So we've now got delta V is equal to negative the integral of EQ dot dS over Q. Now Q is a constant, it's a charge, we're not changing the charge, so we can pull it out the front of the integral. And so you can see that the Q on the top and the Q on the bottom are going to cancel each other out, which gives us a really useful equation for relating potential difference and electric fields, which can be written as the change in potential, delta V, is equal to negative the integral of E dot dS.